Hey, Anchor, welcome. We want to welcome you here to our, our online service. We're excited about you guys joining with us again. I just want to let you know, hey, we are continuing to worship. Even though they tell us not to meet in a room together, doesn't mean that you're going to stop the power of God to meet at your homes or wherever you may be watching today. Just a few announcements to remind you of a couple of things. First, please make note, our offices are still going to be open during the week, but we are asking that if you can communicate with us, please make sure you do that either through phone or through email because we do want to stay connected but also we're trying to do the best that we can with our social distancing. Also we have launched a new YouTube channel that will actually be coming out Tuesday and so we want to invite you to come and look at that. Make sure you watch your emails and see how a way to get connected. It's going to have stuff from our children's ministry, our missions, our students, our adults, and it gives you an opportunity to be able to be with us during the week on a regular basis. And so we're excited about that. But also just want to let you know, we are God's people. And as we come to worship today, not only do we have our nine o'clock, but we also have our 1015 that'll be following today. But you can watch us anytime during the week. We are so glad that you're here. And as we join in our worship today, let us rejoice. Joyce, make sure you put your name that you have joined us and how many people are worshiping in your home. I know it may seem kind of crazy to do that, but for us here, it gives us the opportunity to know that we are connecting with you there. God is in this place and we are going to continue to worship together in these days of uncertainty because no one can stop our God. Let's begin with our word of prayer before we worship. Father God, we thank you. And as we enter into this place, God, we take hold of who you are. And understanding, God, the days of uncertainty, you already know what's going to happen in advance. And so we, as your people, we are coming to join together in worship. And we're going to spread this word and share it to every person that we know. That as we continue to come and sit down at the table and pray, as we continue to come together as a family, there is nothing that can stop our God. And so today, God, we welcome everyone to worship as we come and praise and worship you. Father, we love you and we thank you and we give you this day. For it's in Jesus' most precious and holy name we do pray. Amen.
where every knee will bow, every tongue will confess, every heart will sing out, holy is the name.
You called me out, lifting me up. How great is your love. You bore my weakness, you took my shame, buried my burdens in fields of grace. You called me out, lifted me up. How great is your love. From the heights of heaven, you stepped down to earth. In a sad perfection, gave your life for us. And we are amazed, for we stand in awe.
sister Jesus. Oh, how great, how great, how great is your love. How great, how great, how great is your love. How great, how great, how great is your love. Oh, thank you for the love that you give us for when we feel alone you are our comfort with your sorrow God you are our joy God we sing that how great is your love how great are you Lord God turn our eyes turn our ears turn our hearts towards you we pray in Jesus name Thank you, worship team. Good morning again, um, Isle of Hope family, Anchor worship family. Uh, thanks so much for gathering with us in this way uh, during this time. Uh, our prayer series, we're, we're continuing our series on prayer. And I, I'll tell you this as we start. Uh, one of the things that we've done throughout the week, and especially this morning uh, before we began, is to uh, walk up and down the rows of chairs here in the ministry center and, and imagine to see in our mind's eye uh, your faces and your hearts who are gathered here Sunday after Sunday and so we've already prayed for you we've walked through here we've walked through the uh, our, our historic sanctuary in the pews there uh, we've already seen you in our hearts and in our minds and we are praying for you we are connected in this way while we cannot uh, be at the church we can still be the church and be in connection to one another and connection to our Lord Jesus Christ that is the heart of prayer isn't it can we talk about prayer can we talk about prayer this morning? Specifically, I, I want to talk with us today and I invite you into a conversation around the experience of unanswered prayer. The experience of unanswered prayer, something I think that is uh, common to all of us uh, who've ever uh, opened our hearts and our voices uh, in a cry to God. I I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, Deborah was her name. Uh, she was a member of a church that I, where I was one of the pastors, and, and there was a surprise cancer diagnosis, uh, a cancer that was uh, fast growing, that was rapidly moving. And uh, we prayed, we prayed in, in big church, we prayed in Sunday school classes, uh, we were even invited, some of her friends went to a, a, another kind of upstart congregation that was meeting in a warehouse building uh, and, and they were serious about prayers for faith uh, for healing and in fact at that particular prayer meeting that was called to pray for her that day uh, the leader got up and said if you don't have faith to believe that we can experience healing uh, then get up and, and, and walk out of the room don't even stay I, I, I wasn't sure what I thought then and I'm not sure what I think now about that kind of invitation but we have this uh, experience. Our, our prayers weren't answered uh, the way that we expected them to be because uh, uh, Deborah died. And, and, and along with Deborah's death, uh, I tell you, she left behind some grown children and some kids still at home, a single mom. Uh, along with her death was the death of, of dreams and, and of hopes. And, and for some, the death or, or near death of their faith, their ability to trust in a God who, who we say hears us and answers us as his children when we cry to him. Friends, I wish I could give you an easy answer for this. I, I wish, you know, a few years ago there was an office supply chain uh, and they, uh, they wanted to tell us how simple it was uh, to get what we needed from them. And they had uh, this advertising campaign that you push a button and the button would say, this is easy. That was easy. Friends, we can't push a button. We can't uh, wave our hands and say, well, it's a mystery or, or well, it's God's will. We can't always say that with confidence. But what I am here to tell you this morning is that the Bible, the Bible is more honest about the truth of unanswered prayer, the experience of unanswered prayer than we are sometimes with ourselves uh, and that we are in the church family sometimes. We, uh, we want to give our opinions or our interpretations or we make up stories to go along with what we've experienced. Sometimes the Bible is more honest. The Bible is more honest than we are. Uh, we look every week at the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to begin again this way. Uh, this week, Matthew chapter 6. Jesus says to his disciples then and to us now, This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven 
hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. I want to put that prayer of Jesus, that standard prayer of Jesus, alongside another important prayer of Jesus. Uh, a prayer that's recorded in, in, in all the Gospels, but I'll read out of Mark's Gospel, chapter 14. It's one verse, verse 36. Give it some context. This is, this is Jesus in the last hours uh, that he would have on the earth. Uh, this is Jesus gathering with his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, the disciples don't know the next part of the story, but Jesus knows. Jesus knows that, uh, that his life is about to end. He's going to the cross. And he offers us this prayer, a prayer uh, that I think for us is as important as the Lord's Prayer. Jesus says this. He says, Abba, Father. Everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Let's pause and pray. Father, we cannot live by bread alone. We live by every word that comes to us from your mouth. Uh, open today our ears, our minds, our hearts, that we could receive and live in your living word, who is Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, as we talk about the experience of unanswered prayer, it's going to demand something of us. This is the kind of message I'd rather preach eye to eye and, and heart to heart like we've prayed together. We've prayed together here in, in this building, uh, gathering around saints whose uh, bodies were uh, racked with pain and with sickness. We've gathered before funeral services. One last prayer uh, for strength to, to hold together as we go through a season of grief. We've prayed in living rooms and we've prayed in hospital rooms. And it deserves that kind of openness, this conversation about the experience of unanswered prayer. It, it, it demands that kind of vulnerability with one another. We hold one another, our lives and our hopes, our hurts and our dreams, we hold one another very gently. We hold one another with our, uh, with our hearts open to one another in trust and in love and open to God, this sort of conversation demands a, a kind of vulnerability together as we look at how Jesus invites us to consider a, a prayer that he offered, a prayer that maybe we could be so bold as to say wasn't answered the way that Jesus himself hoped it would be answered. When we look at Jesus' prayer, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. There's an invitation there, isn't there? That even in this darkest moment in the life of Jesus, he began where he would want us to begin. He began with an experience of God's great love. Notice that prayer. This might be one of those times when he would be tempted, when Jesus would be tempted to, uh, to lift up some, uh, some high language about God, to say, oh God, our king, oh God, our righteous judge, to emphasize God's distance as he experienced the turmoil and the distress uh, of this hour before his own death. But in this very moment, at this time when he doesn't know exactly how the next hours, the next days will unfold, Jesus chooses to emphasize the love of his father. He says, it's recorded for us, Abba, that most tender family word, dad, the closest word you could think of for a, a relative or a friend who would protect you and provide for you uh, at the time of your greatest need. Jesus doubles down. He could, he could skirt this right now, but he doubles down on the love of a good and benevolent God, a God who, who intends good for him and a God who intends good for all of us, for all of you. Uh, this is for Jesus and for us a non-negotiable to trust even in our most difficult moments, to trust even in a, a, a new and uncharted waters like we are experiencing as a culture and as a world uh, in the middle of, of this pandemic. Jesus doubles down and, and I'll double down with him on the goodness and the greatness of the character of God. Uh, there's no negotiating around the goodness of God. It's where Jesus starts and it's where he invites us to start. And if that's too abstract, sometimes we step back and we know the goodness of God, don't we? Because we know the goodness of God's presence through other people. 
I, I found an obituary uh, online a few weeks ago, uh, uh, a man named Ken Fusen. He was a, a journalist, a writer for a newspaper in Iowa. Uh, I think with a little bit of his trademark wit, uh, he wrote his own obituary. Uh, he described that he described his journey of life. He described his uh, uh, freedom from uh, an obsessive gambling addiction, and he attributes that to the goodness of God, but listen for how he describes his experience of the goodness of God. He says, uh, he, he talks about finding faith in Christ, and he, thought, he talks about finding a home church, and he says this, he says, if you want to know what God's love feels like, just walk into those doors, seriously, right now, we'll wait, Ken is not going anywhere. Friends, maybe we can't walk into the uh, doors of this church or any church during this season, but we can do this. We can experience uh, the love that God shows through his church, through his people, uh, as we contact one another by phone, as we make visits and take care of basic needs for one another. We can find reminders, can't we, of the love of God. And so we'll double down. We'll double down and insist on the goodness of God even in the middle of this time of trial. Notice what Jesus does else after this. Jesus says, Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Not only does Jesus double down on God's love, Jesus doubles down on God's power, on God's greatness and his ability to do whatever, whatever is needed, whatever is desired in a given moment. Uh, there's a great psalm, Psalm 91, that uh, it was one of Jesus' favorite psalms. Jesus quoted it uh, a couple of times in, in his own life, in the life we have recorded in the scripture. And it's a psalm that comes out of a time of trouble. It's a psalm that comes out of a time of testing. And it says things like this, Psalm 91, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress, my God in whom I trust. I tell you, we wouldn't have a psalm like that if folks hadn't gone through a battle. And then after the battle, they have the confidence in God's power that he is a refuge, that he is a fortress. Uh, psalm 91 goes on to speak about pestilence and plague. And, and we wouldn't know, would we, about God's power in the midst of pestilence and plague if we hadn't already lived through it, God's power often doesn't, uh, doesn't keep us away from that kind of trauma, but it gives us strength while we live through it, while we endure that kind of trauma. Uh, Psalms like Psalm 91, uh, they aren't magic words, prayers like the prayers of Jesus. We don't live in a magic world like fairy tales. This isn't uh, Harry Potter where if you get the potion right and, and say the spell right, everything has to happen just right. We enter, don't we, in our prayer life into a relationship with God. And we affirm his love and at the same time we affirm his power, trusting with Jesus that everything that everything is possible. And so I'll say this, uh, as you struggle with your uh, sense maybe of God's love or God's power, don't let worry or fear crowd out your anticipation. Don't let worry or fear crowd out your willingness to trust and ask God, even in the middle uh, of, of a great challenge. Uh, because really, friends, what are you left with? If, if worry and fear crowd out our trust in God, all we're left with is, our, is sort of our own psychology or our, our own uh, uh, earthly explanation of things. We're, we're left with, with atoms and microbes, and, and those things are real. But friends, I want you to know that God's power and that God's love are real as well. Don't let the worry of life crowd you out from an experience of God's love and God's power, even when you experience uh, what you don't think is a, is a right answer or a good answer to your prayers. So we experience God's love and God's power. I want you to see, too, in Jesus' words, uh, extreme honesty. So we have God's love and God's power, but what Jesus models for us is our own honesty. Uh, we've said that already, that honesty is what's demanded when we come before the Lord in prayer. Jesus was clear. Jesus was clear with what he wanted, and he brought that prayer before God. Let this cup pass from me. 
Let this cup pass from me. Jesus could not have been more honest in saying, this is what I want. I don't want to go through with this. In fact, if you map the Lord's Prayer uh, alongside this prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, you see uh, this is the biggest place uh, of disagreement between those prayers. Jesus in Gethsemane says, Abba, Father, just like in the Lord's Prayer, he says, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your power, everything is possible for you. But in the Lord's Prayer, when he says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, what does he say in Gethsemane? The first thing he says was, this is what I want. This is what I need. Let this cup pass from me. I believe Jesus invites us to that place of vulnerability uh, that we talked about earlier. He invites us to that place of honesty where we can be clear with God in making a request for what we want. Uh, from the Old Testament story of Hannah going to the temple, praying that God would give her a child. We have examples in the scripture uh, of folks in, in every status, in every generation, who were completely honest and open in their prayers before the Lord. This is what I need. This is what I want, Jesus said. But with our honesty, with our honesty also comes an invitation to relinquishment, to give up what we've asked for, and to be willing to expect and to receive something different. Jesus moves quickly from saying, take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Now for Jesus, there was a clear sense, there was a clear sense that had been shaped in him over the course of his entire life, uh, that he was born for this very purpose. Matthew's gospel says that Jesus came to save us from our sins and at the cross, that particular death of, of that particular man, Jesus, that that was the particular way that God was going to work in his life. Friends, I want to invite you to consider this, though, as we deal with the, uh, the mystery of unanswered prayer, uh, that there's often a, a lot of gray area. Uh, we, we are often uh, poised to think that if something turns out one way, it's either my way or it's God's way. And so we lay everything, all of our disappointment and hurt at God's feet. I want you to consider that there may be my will, the thing that I asked for. And that there may be God's will, what God really wants over here. And there may be a whole lot of space in the middle where things turn out just the way they are because of the brokenness of our world, because of uh, the brokenness of human nature, because of the, uh, of the brokenness of, uh, of the society in which we live. There are things, friend, that happen uh, that we don't have to make excuses for. We don't have to defend God or defend what has happened. We know it's not what we wanted, and we know in an ideal world it's not what God wills either. So we can live in honesty, in trust in God, and in vulnerability, and, and, and say, without having to defend or define, we could just say, that was awful. That was painful. And, and we can be fully present with one another in that experience of loss. Kate Bowler has a book called uh, Everything Happens for a Reason and Other Lies that we sometimes believe. I, I love even that title because everything doesn't always happen for a reason that we'll understand and that we have to explain. That's not our place. So let's live with one another. Let's live with one another in an experience of unanswered prayer that allows for that, uh, uh, for, for, for that kind of love, for that kind of hope. For that kind of trust and vulnerability to exist between us. John Newton, the one-time slave trader turned uh, Christian and, and later hymn writer, says this. Some Christians are called to endure a disproportionate amount of suffering. Such Christians are a sign of grace in the church like the flaming bushes that are unconsumed in Moses' uh, day. The strength and the stability of these believers can be explained only by the miracle of God's sustaining grace. Even in the midst of trial, even in the midst of difficulty, we are sustained even when our prayers are unanswered. We are sustained by the presence of God's grace. Johnny Erickson, Tata, tells uh, her own story, the story of going uh, for a dive at the beach in 1967. She misjudged the depth of the water into which she was diving uh, and sustained a spinal injury that paralyzed her for the rest of her life. She went, 
She went and she asked for healing prayer time and time again. She sought counsel and she sought hope. But even without healing uh, that, that would come physically, without that kind of answer to that kind of prayer, she has endured and continues to witness to the goodness and the grace, to the hope and the healing of the human heart that can exist when we continue to hold on to God, when we continue to trust him, even when our prayers seem to be unanswered. Friends, as we uh, wrap up our time together, I want to simply offer you uh, a time to pray. Uh, not a time when I'm going to do a, a whole lot of talking, but maybe right where you are, you uh, gather uh, with your family. If you're not alone or, or just by yourself, you can close your eyes and maybe be honest. I invite you to be honest before God and identify that place where uh, a, a prayer that you have offered hasn't been answered in the way you have anticipated it. Uh, maybe a, a job that wasn't uh, uh, that you didn't get or a job that ended too soon. Uh, maybe you were asking for provision uh, uh, just for the end of the week to make the rent or to make the mortgage and, and the money didn't show up, the money didn't come through. Uh, maybe you needed healing in a relationship and that person just continued to walk further and further away from you. Or maybe it is like so many, a prayer for healing, uh, a healing that we didn't experience here on earth on this side of eternity. I want you to take a moment now and, and identify that prayer before God and allow him time to work, to show you his great love, and to kindle again a, a fresh, a new relationship with him. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, and we want to believe in your love, even in our experience of unanswered prayer. We take a moment now and identify that uh, disappointment, that heartbreak, that place where we ask with, with honesty and maybe with boldness, and you didn't show up the way we expected you to show up. And so, Father, now as we, are, uh, as we are gathered, though we are scattered, we offer one another the gift of vulnerability, the gift of, of tenderness, the gift of trusting you and trusting one another. And we say amen in agreement with all the, all the prayers, all the hurt, all the pain that's been lifted up to you right now. And we ask you to be present. Be present wherever anyone hears our voices, wherever anyone hears our worship. Be present now and Father, remind us of your faithfulness, of your great love for us, a love that's been shown to us so perfectly through Jesus Christ.
are for me, not against me. I am a still sit on unanswered prayers. We don't know why. We don't know what or what your plan is, God. And we just pray that, that we can trust in you and that we will continue to trust in you. That you are still lighting up our path even when we don't understand, even when we cannot see. God, we thank you that we can call you Father. And God, you look after us. You're there to protect us. And God, I, I hope this, this series just reaches into the depths of our soul, into our hearts, and, and teaches us to, to trust in you and pray to you even more. So that with every step, we can, we can have full confidence that you are Lord, you are King of Kings. Jesus, I thank you for everything that you're doing. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all have a great week.